Hi, and welcome to the show. This week we're going to use an old laptop, some software off the internet, and an Xbox 360 controller to make a great retro gaming console. So there are three easy to follow steps. Step one is to get the laptop and the Xbox 360 controller talking together. Step two is to download and install the software. And step three is to configure the software and the config file, install your ROMs and start playing games. For those of you that are using Windows XP, laptop, virtual machine, um, desktop computer, uh, I have done a quick and easy way. So all of the config files are already done and all of the ROM configuration is already done. And I'll put a link to the quick and easy way uh, in the description of the, this video. I will go through all of the additional steps to be able to set all of this up so that you can understand how it's all put together. If you wish to make changes, you'll know what to, do, what to change and how to change it. And if you're installing on an alternate operating system, even Linux, this will make a lot more sense to you. Okay, so the laptop that I've chosen for this project is an Acer Travelmate 4000 series. It's an older style laptop, single core Intel CPU, about 512 meg of memory. It does have a really nice 15 inch LCD screen uh, in the 4x3 screen ratio, which for retro gaming is absolutely perfect. Uh, you don't get the black bars down the side of a 16x9 screen, it'll just fill that screen beautifully. The control that I've that I've chosen for this um, gaming laptop is the Xbox 360 controller. Uh, it works really, really well if you're running the Windows XP operating system. Uh, you can also run Linux on that laptop if uh, it doesn't come with an operating system at all. Uh, and you can get the Xbox 360 controller to run on that Linux operating system really well. The software for this project, which we'll cover in detail as we go through step by step, is RetroArch with an emulation station front end. Step one, assuming you've already updated your Windows XP laptop to Service Pack 2 or 3, uh, you do need 2 or 3 to run the Xbox 360 controller software. So open up a search page, type in Xbox 360 controller Windows XP, that will take you to the Microsoft download page for the Windows XP software. From this point, once the software has downloaded, double click on the file that you just downloaded, it will unzip and then go through an installation process. When you're finished and you plug in your 360 controller, uh, it will actually show you down the bottom that the 360 controller is now set up and ready to use. If you press the center large button on your controller, you'll actually see the software integration component come up on the screen, press that button again and that goes away. Your 360 controller is now set up and ready to use. When downloading the software, we need three files, two from Libretro and one from Emulation Station. So fire up a browser, type in Libretro into the browser. Once you've hit the home page, search for the RetroArc download and the Cores download. Direct links to each will be in the description of this video. Once you've done that and downloaded them, Google Emulation Station, go to the main website and download the installer, not the zip, the installer for Emulation Station on Windows 32-bit system. There's no installer for the RetroArc or the cores. Uh, they are simply folders that we need to unzip and place in the right locations, but Emulation Station is an installer, so double-click on Emulation Station that you downloaded and make sure that that is fully installed. Once you've installed Emulation Station, you need to find the dot .emulation station in your folders. Uh, that is the folder where all of the files for Emulation Station have been installed. Okay, we want to create another folder called Systems. It does have to be called Systems. Uh, and that is where you're going to uninstall all of your RetroArc downloads. So unzip the RetroArc content into the Systems folder. Once you've done that, inside of the Systems folder, I want you to create another folder called Emulators. Now this can be called anything you like, but Emulators uh, is uh, easy to remember, uh, and that is where all of the engines, all of the actual emulator components are installed. Unzip the cores file that you've downloaded and unzip it 
into the emulators folder you just created. Inside of the emulation station folder, the dot emulation station folder, you also need to make a folder called ROMs. Uh, once you've done that, inside of that folder, we create individual system folders. So if you're making one for the Super Nintendo, you will have SNES as a subfolder. If you're making one for the Atari 2600, you'll have Atari 2600 as a subfolder, and there where you put all of your game files. Uh, Emulation Station automatically searches these folders, understands their naming, and puts the found games inside of Emulation Station and available for you to play. The config file is where you set everything up to tell Emulation Station where to find the emulators and tell Emulation Station where to find the ROMs for the particular systems that you've got game files for. The config file is very specific and if you do a typo or miss anything out it probably won't work. Uh, there is a great set of instructions on the Emulation Station site on how to write and configure a config file and of course for those using the quick and easy method uh, my download contains an already to go config file with three or four systems already configured. For those of you using my download and pre-configured config file uh, you'll notice that there are three or four systems already set up in there. Now this works perfectly on Windows XP uh, especially because Windows XP has that documents and settings folder name followed by the user's name, I've used administrator, followed by all of the uh, emulation station paths and configuration etc. So if you're using my download file all you really need to change is the administrator name that needs to be changed to your username of your computer. So if you've logged on as Fred or if you're logged on as Wilma, you need to change administrator to Fred or administrator to Wilma. It must be the exact same as the logon name. All you need to do is save that file. Everything else should be in the right spot and you should be up and running. It doesn't contain any ROMs, but you need to find your own ROMs. Remember the legalities. You are supposed to own an original copy of that game if you're going to download and use a ROM file. So grab whatever ROMs that you're entitled to, put them in the proper locations, change the config file for more systems as you have more ROMs or whatever else that you would like to add. Just follow the uh, exact system config each time. So once you've done your configuration file, download your ROMs, place them in the ROMs folder under the uh, system name, the specific system name. Uh, just have a look at the emulation station site as to um, naming conventions and other things that you need to be aware of. Uh, some Downloads for ROMs will stay as a .zip and others need to be unzipped um, like a Super Nintendo file might be a .smc file. But that's where you put all of your ROMs. Fire up Emulation Station. Uh, you can go through a scrape. A scrape goes to a specific website and downloads any particular art and information to the game that might be relevant if it can find it and it puts it inside of Emulation Station for a nice polished finished product. And at this stage, it's game time. So have fun, and I hope this was a useful video for you. So thanks very much for joining me and watching the show. Subscribers are always welcome, so feel free to subscribe. That would be great. And I hope you'll join me again next week.